This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. And today, we find ourselves in the mall. We're sort of barricaded in because there's zombies coming all through the different stores and rooms and trying to break through the barricades and take us out. Today we're taking a look at Tiny Epic Zombies. This is the latest game from Gameland Games, their Tiny Epic series. Uh, it's for one to five players. It has many different modes, but the main one is one versus many. So I'm gonna show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. There's multiple modes to play this game in, but the main one is one versus many, where there'll be a bunch of humans versus one zombie. Now, at the beginning of the game, each of the human players will get three of the different humans, and they'll choose one of those three and discard the other two. Here's six of what some of the humans look like. And here's a look at six more. There's actually a total of 14 to choose from in the entire game. Now on the back side of all these human cards is the zombie version of that human. And the zombie player actually gets three to choose from and they get to choose which zombie they'd like to be. Now in this case, I'm just playing with two humans. So both of them have selected their human and they will start with some health and they'll start with some ammo at nine. Very important at any point in time, as you take damage, this is gonna be moving to the right. As you take shots and shoot at zombies, this is gonna be going to the left. If at any point in time, these two things touch or cross, that human has been eaten alive. Now we'll go over that a little bit later, but each player also starts with a knife and a pistol as weapons. Where if you do melee attacks, you'll be rolling a die. And if you do a ranged attack, you can spend one to hit a zombie in a different room. Also, at the beginning of the game, there's nine different objectives. Now you're gonna randomly take three of these, and these are the three objectives that the humans in this game are trying to complete to win the game. So for example, these three were the ones selected, uh, and then the game would have a different setup depending on which of the objectives are selected. We'll go over some of these in more detail later. Now here's the main board setup. There's a courtyard in the middle, and each human will have an item meeple there. There's also gonna be a couple of survivors in there that you'll be able to go through. And there's a barricade which you're trying to keep up. You never wanna to get to zero, because if the barricade ever gets to zero, more zombies come in, you're gonna lose one of these survivors. If that happens and there are no survivors left, or if there's no survivors left and one of these two item meeples, uh, humans, get eaten alive, the game's over and the zombie wins. Now this setup is randomized as well. All these different eight rooms here are randomized both in spot and which side, because they're all double-sided and they can start up in any different spot in each different game. So how it works is a human's going to go, then the zombie, then the next human, then the zombie, and so on and so forth. And each player has an item meeple matching the color of blood that's on the health marker. So how it works is it's simple. On your turn, the humans are going to move, and you must move three times. But after each move, you can either kill a zombie, uh, if it's in the same room, or you can try to do a ranged attack by spending ammo to kill one that's one move away. Uh, so let's go over on how this works. Now each of these stores has three rooms, and they're numbered one, two, three, one, two, three, things like that. This uh, courtyard has five rooms. One, and then there's little rooms on the side. Two, three, four, five. So now if I'm going to move, uh, I can move from here into one of these side rooms would be a first movement. But the athlete's special ability is fast as lightning, and if they start their turn in a room without a zombie, their first move can take them two rooms away. So his first movement could go one, two. Now, after your movement, if there was a zombie here, you'd have to fight the melee. We'll go over that in just a moment. But if you want to, you can optionally shoot uh, a zombie that's in an adjacent room. Now, going into an adjacent room is anything that's touching, even if there's a wall there. So in this case, this zombie is an adjacent, so we can use the ammo to shoot it. So you take this down to nine, and that zombie would just get eliminated. Keeping in mind, if this ever crosses this at any point in time, you're eaten alive and you have to get a new human. And so now that zombie would go back into that zombie player's supply. Now, if a store is ever empty, you can activate things that are in the same room as you after you move. So in this case, the store's empty, there's no zombies. This is a secret passage, I could activate this. This specific one allows me to move to the other secret passage which happens to be here. So if I want to, my next move could take me here. Now remember, I've only done one move, but I used its special ability to move twice. So for my second move, I'm gonna move here, and there's a token there. Again, since there's no zombies here, I can interact with this token. Now let's look at this a little bit further. 
Now this has to do with the investigate the source, one of the three objectives. And there's different sources there. That one was virus, but there's fungus and dark magic, radiation, bioweapon. There's one of each of these tokens, and this is the source. And you're trying to find out what the source is. And over the course of the game, you're going to be flipping these over by going into those rooms that, are, that don't have any zombies in them and flipping them over. And at any point after doing that, you can guess what this is. If you're wrong, you got to shuffle all the ones that were there back and redistribute them. But if you're right, then you know which one is not there anymore. You shuffle the rest and you put them all back out again. So you're going to be trying to deduce which ones they are, taking time to find out which ones they are. And there's a little bit of pressure luck where you can kind of guess early. But if you're wrong, you sort of have to start over again with those specific tokens. But once you find out what all of these are, and they're all flipped up as the source, uh, then you have completed one of the three major objectives for this game. And as we're talking about objectives, this one is fix the helicopter. There's four different gears that you have to get to the courtyard. So someone would need to come to where the first gear spot is, like this. It would need to be empty with zombies, pick up the token, and eventually get it back to the courtyard, which then it would be finished, the first one, but then it would go to the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. This is the second location, third location, and fourth location. Essentially, you're bringing four different gears back to the courtyard to complete that helicopter. Now, for the last objective, there would have been one of these tokens in each of the entrance, and the entrance is the number one. So when I got here, this token would have also have been flipped, and this has a number two on it. And so here we would simply put the number here. Basically, there's two number ones and two number twos, and there's different symbols of the different room types. You're basically finding those. After you've found all these, the last two will show you the real exit number and symbol. And after you finish the first two objectives, that will show you which room you need to exit at the end of the game. For example, if the last two found, which it always is the real exit, was this purple sign and two, then you would need to escape out of that parking deck uh, at the end of the game after you finish the other objectives. So now let's say we have one movement left with this guy here. Uh, now, even though there's walls here, anything it touches, you can jump into. Think of the walls have been broken down by the zombies. So let's do my last move here. And when you're in a uh, spot with a zombie, then you must do a melee attack. And when you do that, you simply roll a die. Now, the zombie will always die. But if you roll this, nothing additional happens. If you roll this, you take one damage. If you roll this, you would have taken two damage. And if you roll this, that's an overkill. And it allows you to take an additional move optionally if you want to. But if you do, you can't take any of the other additional actions like taking the token. So we could move additionally. And if there was a zombie there, you'd fight them. And you can overkill multiple times. It just allows you to move faster and kill more things. But you're giving up possible things that you might have wanted to do in that room anyway. Then you're going to search the store that you're in. Now, at the beginning of the game, the zombie player has a specific deck of cards, and they're going to give one face down to each of the players. So here during the search, you would flip this card up and you would see which room to put it into. So here we would put it into uh, any one of the purple rooms. And so they'd add it to one of the purple rooms. And now if another human gets here and they're in this store and there's no zombies there, they can pick up this card and do what it says. In this case, it's gaining uh, one ammo and then discarding the card. Then the zombie player can add two zombies to these purple rooms, either two to the same or one and one in this case. And the zombie decides to add them into this purple one. Again, you always go in order. Room one has one, now room two, and one, th one in room three. Now this is important because the four stores that are uh, in cardinal directions from the courthouse are the most important because if another zombie now has to get placed here, there's nowhere to go, they run into the courtyard. If that happens, this barricade goes down to one, and if another zombie gets added, this will go down to zero, which means you'll essentially, uh, you know, uh, kill one of these survivors and this is gone like that. Then it would just reset back to two like this. There's different ways throughout the game to raise the barricades from the human side, different cards and such. But if there's ever no survivors left and this barricade gets down to zero, well, then the game is over for the humans and the zombie player has won. And another way to lose some of these survivors, if you will, is if one of the humans gets eaten alive, meaning their health matches their ammo, uh, then you'd lose a survivor as well. So those are two ways to lose survivors. And once both survivors are gone, if anyone's eaten alive or this barricade gets to zero, the zombie player wins. Also note that all these rooms also go clockwise. So over the course of the game, let's say more zombies are added to this one. Now, if a zombie is to be added in this room, there's nothing it can go to, and it goes clockwise, and then there's nothing in this room, and then it would hit the barricade, so things can chain together like that. However, if instead of that card being placed in front of them from the zombie being in the purple room, it actually was a room that this player ended their turn in, this blue room, well, the human made noise. And when that happens, you get to trigger an ability. The zombie player would trigger this. All players in the store with two or more zombies each perform a wound check. Basically, you roll the melee die and you take a wound if it is rolled. But it also gets to move up because you made noise. 
and this would happen again next time. Uh, and this can continue to go up and get stronger and stronger as this goes. By the way, each zombie also has a special ability that's always uh, working. And so players must pay two to kill a zombie with a range attack if it's the only zombie in the store. So that last zombie we actually killed with a range attack would have taken two, but you didn't know that yet. I didn't want to bring in too many details, but each zombie has its own little special ability there. So if that was the card drawn, they could have added zombies to any of the blue rooms instead of that other room. Now, what are these doing? Sometimes there's weapons there. If you're in this place and you know it's the it's there's no zombies there, you're able to then get this weapon. And this weapon will is uh, basically a hand weapon. And this would allow you to, if you're overrun, you can spend one ammo to kill the zombie and not take a wound. Because normally, if you're in a room and the zombie player adds a zombie right where you're at you would be overrun and essentially just taking one wound, but this could stop you from that by using ammo. Now how weapons work is if you have a hand weapon, you kind of put it over like this. You can only have one weapon, uh, one melee and one ranged weapon. If you want to swap it out, you can put this back to the room that you're at and take a different weapon that's there, assuming there's no zombies there. Uh, but when you get these weapons, you get to level up your item meeple. So for example, if we had the revolver, we would take it from the items and place it and you put it right into the item meeple's hand. And again, everyone can have one ranged and one melee weapon. And here's some of the other weapons you can get, an ax, a crossbow, chainsaw, baseball bat, all sorts of cool things that when you get that card and you, wep you weaponize it, you get to put it into your item meeple, which is really cool. Now the last thing the zombie player will do on the turn is give that last player that just went another card that's face down. They won't get to look at it to try to guess where they'll be next turn as well. Now let's say we think this player is going to go here to take care of these zombies next turn into that purple room. Now the zombie player starts with a hand of four cards and once they've gotten rid of all their cards they get four more. So at the most they're looking at is four. But let's say the zombie had this purple card here. They put it face down in front of this player. This player would not know what it is until they flip it up next turn. As you see, if it matches where they're at, you make noise and bad things happen. And so after that, the next human would uh, take a turn. So it would be this human's turn and then back to the zombie and back to this player and so on and so forth. Now different rooms have different things going on. If this is empty and you're here, you can gain an ammo. Here you can take this motorcycle and ride it three extra moves. Uh, here you can take supplies back to the courtyard. And if you do that, it ends up coming back, but you also get to grab a supply card. And supply cards are typically things that are weapons that you can use or things that you can put in your backpack, which you place just to the right of your person. And then you can basically use this when you want. Now again, if at any point in time you have to cross paths or even touch the two, uh, the health and the, and the ammo, then you are eaten alive. And so that athlete then give, gets given to the zombie player and becomes a zombie. Well, now they will have abilities as well here, and they can do things and things will get greater when you make noise, but the zombie player can never have more than three of these. And that player would have had to drop all their weapons where they're at in that store, and then this player would now get a new human from the supply. And this continues until either there's no survivors left and the human gets eaten alive or the barricade gets down to zero or the humans win by completing all three objectives. Now, there's many different ways to play the game. This was one versus many in a cooperative fashion, but each of these can also be played in a competitive fashion. So it could be one versus many, but in the competitive fashion, all of these work sort of in different ways to make it a more competitive game. And instead of playing one versus many, you could play a purely cooperative or a purely competitive where an AI runs the zombie player. And you can also play a solo mode where the human runs both humans and the zombie AI will be played in between each of the human turns. Okay, let's first start with the art and sort of the look and feel of the game. It definitely captures that zombie style theme. Now I'm not into zombie themes myself, but I think it does a good job of actually depicting of what that theme should look like in a game. So definitely uh, top notch art and components here. Uh, now, the production side of things uh, and those items for the item meeples are just awesome. Item meeples uh, is sort of a trademark thing that Game on Games came out with, I believe possibly with either uh, Heroes of Land Over Sea or Tiny Epic Quest, one of those two, they sort of came out where you, the meeples can be, you know, can have weapons and different things that they're holding. Uh, and so all the different weapons that come with this are just really cool. You get the, you know, the baseball bat and the chainsaw and things like that. And having your, uh, your item meeple having those things, holding it running around is, is not only cool to look at, but it also helps you remember, you know, what things you have that you can do. Now the cards are in front of you, well, you know, but 
sometimes if you have multiple things going on, you know, it's easier to see uh, when you're looking on the board, like, oh yeah, I do have the chainsaw because my item meeple's holding it. So I think that's cool as well. Um, now the base game, the, the main way this was designed to play is one versus many. And I typically love one versus many style games. I typically also love to be the one versus everybody else. Uh, so in this, I play it more as the zombie as anything else. Uh, but as you're the zombie, you're trying to basically you know, you're, you're guessing the other player's locations and what they're going to be on their next turn. Where do you think they're going to go? Or maybe you're playing those cards and trying to figure out uh, which events or things are going uh, that you want to trigger at certain times and things like that. So I like that aspect of it. I like that it has three different objectives and those can be, they're randomized each game. So each game is going to feel a little bit differently as you're trying to, uh, as the humans are trying to do those three different things and, and finish the game and win. I like how the stores are also randomized. You know, there's two sides and they're in different spots each time. Uh, th that's all randomized. And that each of those stores has sort of abilities and things that you can do on them as well. So again, a much more replayability built right into the game. Uh, I like as you're moving around as a humans, you're deciding, okay, am I going to move and then melee? Uh, or can I move to this spot that doesn't have a zombie and then use some ammo? You know, it's because with the melee, it's possible health. But if it's ammo, it's definitely coming down. And those are your two sort of resources in the game and if they ever cross you've been eaten alive so you're trying to manage both of those uh, and it, it leads to some interesting decisions in the game uh, i like that the weapons uh you know a lot of people might complain that you know, oh you just go and you're rolling dice for the melee and you're just you're you're getting hit possibly and it's just random well yes there are it is random the dice is random but you can you know you, you can get some extra moves from the dice uh, or you can just do the ranged weapon and not use the dice but there are plenty of weapons that help you mitigate that dice roll and so that might be a strategy to go off uh, if you want to do more melee stuff then go get some of the weapons that, that help you or aid you in sort of mitigating the dice or if certain things are rolled you get even better abilities so i like that aspect how it sort of mitigates the dice a little bit uh, now containing the courtyard that's a big thing for the humans because you're trying to keep them away trying to keep the zombies away from pushing that barricade down but you're also at the same time trying to do objectives so it's an interesting balance of when you're trying to like, oh, should I go do this and get rid of these zombies? Because if not, if, and if this card comes up, they're going to come down and hit the barricade. Or I'm so close from that gear that I need for the helicopter, but it's two rooms away. Should I go get that and then try to come back and just hope, press our luck that we don't get hit with the zombies this turn in this spot? So there's lots of different things to, to think about and tough decisions to make as the humans. I like how when a human gets eaten alive from the zombies, meaning the, the health and the uh, you know the bullets the ammo sort of cross that it essentially that player becomes a zombie it flips over it goes to the zombie player and that zombie player is now more powerful and i think that's just a cool aspect the fact that they're all those all the, the the humans have an other side that just is the zombie version of them gives them some new special abilities for the zombie player to do i think that's a cool thing uh, i like that it has many other modes of play some people are not gonna like one versus many and that's okay some people just don't like it i love that uh, some people are going to, well, then you could play it purely cooperative. Well, if you don't like that, you could play it one versus many, where the many are cooperative, uh, competitive instead of cooperative. Uh, and all the, the objectives have two sides. You flip those over. So it's very, uh, you know, it's very flexible. Like if you, there's got to be a mode here that you're going to probably prefer more than others. The solo works well. So um, I played the solo a couple times and it's it's fine. It works well. You're just basically running two humans. And, uh, and so a lot of the modes sort of work similarly uh, with a little twist, uh, but I like how that there's plenty of different modes to choose from so that everyone has sort of a mode that works the best for them. But I still think the way it was designed one versus many is still the best for me. Uh, now, for me, let's look at some of the negatives. Now I mentioned at the beginning, um, actually this isn't a negative, it would have been a negative. The theme itself, uh, now I don't care about zombies. I'm not a big zombie theme and it typically, that theme is a deterrent from me. But even with that being a deterrent, I still enjoyed it. And so actually, this isn't necessarily a negative, this is really a positive because even though I'm, it, this would take picks down on my like meter because it is that theme, I still really enjoyed it, which means it's even better of a game than I thought it was because I'm enjoying a game that's a theme that I typically wouldn't enjoy. So I think that's a cool thing. Um, now, the other negatives is some people like uh, have this sort of problem with cooperative games with if there's all of open information this thing called quarterbacking can happen where someone can just tell other players what to do on their turns um i don't have ever i i don't run into that issue with the people i play with some people do uh, and if you do this does not take that out of here but like i mentioned before the other side of that is you could play one versus many cooperatively or you could play i mean competitively or you could play competitively against an ai uh you know that way too so there's plenty of different ways even if quarterbacking bothers you uh, other modes that you can enjoy this. I also think with the five players, 
uh, too much really happens between your turns. Um, you know, you've got your turn and then the zombie, and then your, the, you know, the next turn the zombie's alternating. And by the time it gets back to you, there's, there's, it's just too much have happened. And your plans, you're kind of just basically, what, what's the best thing I could do right now versus how can I set things up for the future? So I think five was a little too many for me. I think this, this game is best uh, with two to four. Solo's fine too, one to four, I guess I'd say. Uh, but five was a little weak for me. Uh, just not, just, just too much going on in between turns to have any type of real long-term strategy or anything. But other than that, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it surprised me how much I liked it with this theme. Um, and I, because it can play so many different modes, uh, and because there's such a big game in such a small box, and it's uh, you know very uh, easy to fit on my shelf and stuff, this is absolutely definitely getting a saxophone serenade. Uh, it surprised me. I liked it more than I thought I was going to. So let's give it a saxophone serenade. This has been the Game Boy Geek, helping you find and enjoy the next board game you'll love. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.